the primary takeaway from our study is, is probably that patients with late stage cancer are not getting adequately counseled to enable them to stay strong and, and as fit as possible as they go through treatment. And that, that they're really not aware that there's a problem, that, that there's any, any deficit in, in the information they're receiving. I think for patients, that's a tough one because it's what we're finding is, is a deficit in um, the provision of services and information to our patients with cancer. And I think writing this is going to take a, a long time and, and to some extent a, a change in culture. The, the idea that wellness and strategies to preserve whole body wellness are an essential part of treating a devastating disease like cancer, particularly in its later stages, uh, is that hasn't been um, really a, the dominant, the, the overarching theme in our care delivery. So for patients, I think this means that they're going to have to be proactive in seeking out guidance about how when you have stage four cancer, that's when the cancer has spread and, and is uh, no longer just at the primary site, but is, has spread in the body, and you're, you're receiving often aggressive treatments to try and control that cancer so you can live as long as possible, that they're going to have to be proactive about seeking information on fitness, wellness, maintenance of strength and muscle power. Well, you know, there's no right answer for what, what is enough exercise because it's so individual. And I think what, what we found among patients is they restrict their activities to, as a way of controlling their symptoms. If you feel worsening fatigue, worsening shortness of breath, perhaps pain when you exercise, not doing anything is, is a way of not feeling your symptom. The downside of that, and we certainly don't want them to feel unpleasant symptoms, but the downside of not moving is that little by little the body gets weaker and it gets less and less able to do even normal activities. So I think the key is for every individual you need to know wh where your threshold is, uh, where symptoms occur, and be conscious of, of pushing that in a gentle and respectful way. So if, if mowing the lawn makes you work up a sweat and feel tired, great, that's, that's right for you. And it may be that you need to do it, break it into four parts so that you, you don't overdo. But pushing that envelope in a very gentle and, and again respectful, listening to the body. But, but doing nothing is not the right answer either. We are in the process of launching a very large randomized controlled trial to see if providing exercise counseling and got individualized guidance to patients with late stage cancer will make a difference in the symptom burden they have, their quality of life, their utilization of healthcare services. And so hopefully we will have an answer as to whether that, and, and survival certainly, whether that makes a difference. If it does, then we have some, some very compelling data to try and, and argue for a change in service delivery, that this really should be an integral, essential part of the way we care for patients. And everybody, all patients being treated should have access to information and, and perhaps individualized physical activity counseling. I think one of the, the important pieces of information for providers, on, and I've been consistently impressed in, in this study and others, at the alliance that patients have with their oncologists and their cancer care teams, which is very understandable and appropriate. The downside of that is, there's, is they're not motivated to seek beyond that um, clinical relationship for guidance in fitness and other things. And, and in truth, the cancer doctors are, are focused on treating the cancer. This is what they've trained to do. It's what they do extremely well. 
uh, they may not be as comfortable giving exercise advice. And, and what we found in the study is patients took either no advice as, as an acknowledgement that what they were doing was okay, that, that it was okay to sit in the lazy boy. Ah, my doctor knows what I'm doing, he's fine with it. Or the advice that was received was quite vague, stay active. But a lot of patients, they don't know how to operationalize that for them. And so I, I, for providers, I think it says, if you're, if you're delivering cancer care, that you really need to be quite specific and concrete in the recommendations that you provide your patients. And there's certainly now a wealth of resources for providers uh, to access regarding what, what is the right amount for each patient.